So, well, perfect timing. timing. Yeah. This is what happens. You get discovered by Stephen Winter. Mm -hmm. He gets John Cameron Mitchell and Gus Van Sant right. on board. Actually, I had met John Cameron Mitchell about six months prior to that because I had auditioned for Short Bus. He ended up not casting me because he didn't quite know what to do with me, but I had, I had given him an excerpt from the film, the scene that you guys just saw, which was the 11-year-old amalgam of Lindsay Wagner and Alfre Woodard from For Colored Girls Who Consider Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough. Okay. And sort of emulating my mother. That's sort of what all that was about. And I showed him that in my audition tape, and then we became really good friends at that point. And then six months ahead I, is when I had gone back. Between that time, between that six-month period before the Mixed Film Festival, I had gone and basically rescued my mother uh, when she had a near-fatal uh, bout with an accidental lithium toxicity. And then I came back to New York and still continued to work on this movie. I And then going back up to speed, what we were talking about, uh, going to went to the Mixed Film Festival, uh, and then after that, uh, right about four days before the Mixed Film Festival, uh, Stephen and I uh, sent the now two-hour cut of the film back to John Cameron Mitchell, who was in Portland, Oregon, tweaking his screenplay, and John passed it on to Gus Van Zandt, uh, who was right around the corner from him, and between that's when everybody sort of simultaneously and collectively came on as a producer. And this happened like 2004 in 2000 December? 2003. Actually, is 2003, when this happened. You're yes, right. right. Was, 2003, and John and Gus both came on as executive producers in the sense uh, that they just really wanted to endorse their names on the project to help catapult the film to another level and allow the film to receive the attention that it probably would have never received. And and Stephen Winter came on as a producer in the sense that he utilized a lot of his sweat equity within arm's length contacts to, to sort of to, to champion the movie around New York and create a buzz there. He was also a very integral part of getting the film into the Sundance Film Festival. Can, can um, you kind of tell us a little bit about... Sun, you went from Gay Lesbian Film Festival. Right, gay and Lesbian Film Festival to the Sundance Film Festival. But the stipulation, the, the film kept going, kept sort of morphing from this three hour impressionistic insanity yes. to the to the 88 minute documentary that it was solely based on stipulation of each festival running time. So like, uh, you know, Mix couldn't show my three hour version, so I had to cut it down to two hours. Sundance couldn't show my two hour version, so I had to cut it down to 88 minutes and that's when the film sort of became the documentary that it is and I still don't did call it a documentary. Did you start getting the feeling that something was happening? Did you start getting Oh yeah, oh, you did. right even before Wellspring dis distributors came along and, and basically saved my butt uh, for you know getting the film into the Cannes Film Festival which was another sort of sack of worms. Uh, what was the question again? Well, well, was, it's the progression like here. Thinking, I'm thinking I, and I talking think, at the same time. I think a lot of people don't understand that you're, you moved really quickly in a year. You, you oh, took yeah. off from 2003, fourth quarter 2003, and you ran all through 2004. Oh, completely. And you're hitting off 2005 the same way. You're leaving in a few days the, for Europe. so it's Yeah, the it's, film was made in about six weeks, and I've done over like 800 interviews, and have, the, the film has just been on a whirlwind. And the film has literally gone from my desktop computer to a world, had gone from a, a, my desktop computer to a worldwide distribution deal worldwide in less than a year. And, and that's, why you're been, the, that's why you're the poster child. And it's just, yeah, you're, it still kind of wakes me up in the middle of the night with uh, fireflies in my stomach, just kind of wondering what it is that I've done. USA Today had that whole spread yeah. without even your permission to use your photo, I know, apparently. I know. Uh, you woke up and saw yourself all over the newspaper saying, this is the poster, this is the poster child for what's happening in yeah. the industry. CDBaby.com was in there and DeviantArt.com was in there. And there's your picture. And, and they're saying, Jonathan, you'll be in textbooks. More likely than not, you and your story will wind up for film students from now it's, on out, they're going to be looking at Jonathan and what Jonathan's cycle is. That's yeah. why you're so important. I just talked to somebody, a, a Berkeley student, about four months ago, uh, or a little longer ago than that, at the Los Angeles Film Festival. And I heard that as of this year, 2005, that they're going to be studying my film at Berkeley. I they're creating a textbook yes. based on Tarnation yes. and how it was made. Do you, and it's do you comprehend <laughs> this? We're talking Alfred Hitchcock. No. Yes. We're talking. <laughs> the, the thing is, is that I'm so in the thick of it. I'm so in, in the, the trees. thick of it that I in the thicket of yes, it yes. that it's very hard for me to sort of objectively stand back and kind of emotionally process everything that's sure. happening. So I don't. I mean, I could regret this, making this movie, putting <laughs> no. my life out there in no. ten years from now. But no, I don't. I don't know. You'll ne we will I, never regret you doing. You're a very brave person to to give us 
that, and what you gave us was an opportunity to look at all of our closets have skeletons. I know. And you We've gave all us got, that opportunity. Do we have FCC? Yes, well, we do. Oh, we can't, so yeah. we can't say the S word or the We're F not word. We're not supposed or, to, but okay. I think the boys just blew it out okay. right there on the oh, phone. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, well, they're on the East Coast. It's a different world over there. That's but. okay on the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, it is, but, you know. Sometimes, but. but but I guess also, Jonathan, I want to kind of bring it around back into your distribution deal. What did you see different between Cannes Film Festival mm -hmm. as opposed to when you flew overseas? Uh, well, you were here for the uh, Sundance, pardon me, then you flew overseas, and you're afraid of flying. I'm completely afraid of flying. I, needless to say, I've, got, I've completely gotten over my fear of flying. Phobia? Yeah, I mean, I had to, I had to pop all kinds of, you know, relaxing things to just get on an airplane along with, you know, swinging back a little bit of Jack Daniels, I mean, just whatever to get on an airplane, whatever it took. And now I've gotten over my fear of flying, thank God. But what did you see different when you left from Sundance, which, you know, Sundance is huge, Sundance huge, was but a huge, is it? Sundance was like the, the New York Stock Exchange version of film festivals. Now, in retrospect, now after all the other sure. ones I've gone to. Um, we, I got scouted for the Cannes Film Festival at the Sundance Film Festival, and that's when they said, we'd love, we'd love to show this we'd love to show this movie, but you're going to have to allocate a 135 millimeter print of your movie because we're diehard cinistes with French subtitles. And that alone was going to cost $50,000. Wow. So the stakes were very, very high for finding a distributor. Uh -huh. And that's when Wellspring Media came in and basically we were shopping the movie around. We actually had an offer from the uh, several from several distributors at that point. Wellspring had offered the best deal under the circumstances because there were quite a bit of there were quite a few rights and clearances that we 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 had to clear. And, and then you, w you went into theatrical distribution. I I wanted a theatrical distribution, and I I gave Wellspring the whole farm. And then you're turning around in May, and you're distributing it on DVD. I'm going to be. Di I'm not. But well, Wellspring is distributing is. it yeah. on uh, DVD. And needless to say, I mean, this is it's been a it's been a wonderful thing because I'm going to be able to sort of. I, I guess take the momentum that I've acquired from making this and I can actually christen my own dis distribution company after this. So any sort of oh, DIY bet. thing that I do after this will be solely on my own. You bet. Which I'm very, very grateful and Which has about. been happening in the music industry for quite some time. It's yeah. very common for someone in the music industry to hit, mm -hmm. then they create their own label. It is. And then they, they make their artists under their label. Mm -hmm. But we're going to see that in the film industry. Oh, that's, definitely. That's I, I really think like people like Apple and any of these software companies that have created this home domestic, you know, iMovie and Final Cut Pro, I don't think they're cognizant of the monstrosity that they've created. I agree with you. Because it's really going to enable the medium of film to give right, to, to, to have this, uh, establish this intimate relationship between film and the, the artist, the yes. filmmaker, and it's going to transcend and, and, and be a renaissance and a revolution all across the board, even to the way that we put films out and project them and distribute them. And Which is an emerging genre. I'm thank gonna, God. I'm yeah. going to stick it out there. You, you're probably the, also the poster boy for the emerging genre of this filmmaking that you did, which is you took your family mm -hmm. and you showed what your family was, was happening in mm -hmm. your family, and it deals with mental illness. Yes. You're dealing with mental illness. Yeah. And that is a social ill that you're addressing through your art. Yeah, which, which, is, which is a subject matter that people always whitewash and, and and brush under the carpet. Don't want to talk about and it. Don't want to talk about it. And you know, I I do. And 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 my mother does. And I think between my mother and I, we've always known that we've had a really poignant story that we've had to get out there. And she never knew necessarily, and I never knew that we. I I had it sort of everything kind of hovering under my nose the whole time because my initial idea to do this movie was to to do it with actors as a narrative and also even the early one of the earlier versions of Tarnation was capped with a fictitious ending that would you know where my grandfather pulls out a gun and shoots yes, me which was time. going to leave sort of this very um, large ambiguity to, to well are these people just really good actors or are you know kind of a Blair Witch thing kind Did of a really Blair Witch thing this is yeah. what what are we seeing here and yeah. it was a sort of a safe framing device by saying this isn't necessarily me this isn't necessarily my mother this isn't the real deal and then I just decided actually right before the Sundance Film Festival uh, literally two days before I went to go to Sundance we shot that new ending where I walk, I don't want to give it away too much for those who sure. haven't seen it, but 